So on our way back, we made a slight detour. This is the Lehigh Tannery Historic Site. And going by the placard, this was at one point in history the second largest tannery in the country, I believe. Yes. Over a hundred families lived here and there were two railroads that ran through. Mm -hmm. Sorry folks, unfortunately the photographer went full potato on this picture. So here's the next best thing. River ran black. In the woods next to the river are the ruins of the Lehigh Tannery and a village named Lehigh Tannery. Over 100 families lived here. Two railroads ran through town. An ice house, steam saw mill, hotel, and school clung to the river's edge. Bark from the valley's great hemlocks was the ingredient essential to the town's success. Hemlock bark provided the tannic acid used to cure as many as 50,000 hides a year, making this a second largest tannery in America during this era. The river and the forest paid an enormous price for the tannery's good fortune. Waste dumped into the river turned it black. Logging created a landscape littered with debris and abandoned trees cut only for their bark. In 1875, an uncontrollable fire ignited and swept through the forest floor, engulfing and forever destroying the tannery. Only decades before naturalist and artist John James Audubon visited here and sketched a variety of native birds, he sadly noted the deforestation in his journal. Today, industry is largely gone. Instead, rejuvenated forests again shelter native birds and welcome modern Audubons. In addition to the placard I just read, there's a couple notes I'd like to share. The first being, in 1860, the Lehigh Tannery would expand its footprint, thereby increasing its capacity to process 80,000 hides a year, making it the largest tannery in the United States. Second, in 1865, a fire would partially destroy the tannery, however, it would be promptly rebuilt. And finally, in 1875, the aforementioned Great Fire that would burn it down to its foundation would also devastate the town of Hickory Run. To this day, only two buildings from that era still remain, the chapel and the manor house that can still be found today in Hickory Run State Park. It's really interesting to see foundations like this, that out of all the old mills and different things that you see, uh, you know, just just to construct this is, is unbelievable. Uh, and then it's still standing today. That's this is really, really something special here. That's really, really cool. Yeah. Just a vestige of Pennsylvania's once great industry. Yes. And the perseverance to succeed out in the wilderness like this. Uh, yes. At one point, at uh, one point in history, Pennsylvania was uh, like an industrial titan between coal mining, steel production, hardwood. And think uh, the town of Hickory Run, that was all based on logging and sawmills. Uh, mm -hmm. That's just right here around the corner. So, I'm sure I missed a couple in there, but those are the big ones. Yeah. Also, I thought I would throw this in. The first active pumping oil well was right here in Pennsylvania. Oh. So, Dave. Yes, sir. I'm not really sure. This is definitely the foundation. There's no denying that. Now, what would have gone in these individual chambers? I honestly don't know. I do see drainage, like you pointed out. Yeah, a couple of these have holes in the bottom. That might just be the passage of time and water doing its thing. I honestly it, can't say, but... It could, but those are strangely in line if it was natural. Hmm. That's entirely true. Now... I did notice, over here, these two are substantially larger. They're almost the size of three of these other smaller ones. Yeah. I wonder if these would have been beneath the tannery, maybe under the floor as storage or drying areas. And then these could have been tanks or cisterns that they actually used to treat the hides. And then there is that other little wall that's hard to see, but it juts out after that yeah. wall and goes down. And that's about as wide as this without a wall in the middle. Yes. It's really hard to tell with it just being a foundation. I think we're going to uh, investigate this one a little yeah, further. Yeah, definitely. Dirty Dave, I hate to say it, but I think we might be about to get a big piece of crow pie. Yeah. This is excitingly unexpected here. I take back what I said about eating crow. See, at first I was 
I was wondering about why the Turnhole Tunnel is listed twice, number 10 and 26 on PA bucket lists, 31 places. So, now there's this. Definitely man-made. Well, there's no question about that. This is neat. Oh boy, a bridge. Very cool. That's where we came out. Are you speechless or out of breath? Speechless. I'm a little bit of both. Like I... That was so unexpected. I mean, this is beautiful down here. It was actually funny because we drove past it. <laughs> My head snapped over and I gasped and I quick stopped, backed up and looked at it like, we're going in. Yeah. I go, did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. Creek down there. So, here's what I can gleam out of this. This is definitely not the mysterious second turnhole tunnel. No. Because there would be evidence of a railroad trestle here. Yeah, I can't see a thing. And also, that's probably just barely wide enough for one train. But definitely man-made. Yeah, uh, obvious, I would agree. Obvious uh, purpose to this. This is not a little feat here. I mean, this is this is serious work for some reason. Now, what I'm curious about now, what I'm curious about is this is a really short tunnel. I mean, we were basically hunched over the whole way through. Yeah, as for the show. So, we can both agree this is man-made, more, more likely than not. But for what purpose it served, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of weird because... Could, could have been drainage. Maybe. But the creek over floods. It diverts this way down here. That's one thing I can think of. Like, why would you take the effort? Is it possible this is a second tunnel? Could be. It's hard to judge that, though, because you would think on the hillside there would first be some type of trestle, leftover trestle uh, pylons or whatever. Let's hit it. So. Ready? Yes. And the return trip. I'll put myself out, you know? Yeah. Alright, return trip.
it's really square. It's got to be man-made. I was just even, I almost stood up there and I realized there's rock one foot above my head. We did it. I mean, just look at that though. It's definitely man made. Yeah. Let's see, the chisel up parts. Or remember. Very cool though. We're surprising ourselves today. Yes. <laughs> so, well, I think we have a little homework to do. Definitely. I think we need to find out if we were right all along about the turnhole tunnel, or if uh, there really is a second tunnel and this one's it. I think the other one's a little more interesting, though. All right, let's roll. Well, you knew we'd be back here, huh? Yeah, we wouldn't stay away for long. So anyway, our day started with, we were gonna go fish up in Hickory Run, try and hit some of these wild trout streams. Didn't pan out quite like we planned but we found two neat new abandoned locations that we yes. decided to make, make into this video, actually. The burnt down Lehigh Tannery, which is actually in the town of Lehigh Tannery, as it's called. And we found the second Lehigh Gorge Tunnel. Now, I looked at it a little further. I checked the website again, PA Bucket List, and following his links, 10 and 26 are in fact that tunnel behind us. Now, that being said, I'm gonna reach out to him and let him know about this tunnel. Maybe he knows something we don't. Yeah, maybe it wasn't for the railroad after all. Maybe it was something else that they did for yeah. drainage or making it easier for them to pass through. Uh, maybe it was a simple mistake that it's on there twice. Right. Either way, we'll be looking forward to hearing back from him. Hi, future Mad Max here, except in corporeal form this time, not just a disembodied voice. I'd like to share something with you. After filming that tunnel, we reached out to the author of PABucketList.com, Rusty Glessner, and we let him know about how 10 and 26 seem to be repeats, and we let him know about the tunnel we found. So, good catch. That is exactly what I had intended to do, and I updated the article to change number 26 to that Rockport Road tunnel. Unfortunately, I know nothing about that tunnel, seems too low and rough hewn to have been used for rail purposes unless it was possibly like a mule cart type scenario, but that's just speculation on my part. Best of luck with the videos. Shoot me some links when you post them. So I'd like to send out a special thanks to Rusty Glessner for getting back to us and sharing what he knows. And now he's corrected his website. Number 26 is now the Rockport Road Access Tunnel, which you've seen in this video. Keep up the good work, Rusty. We're really enjoying what you're doing over there at pabucketlist.com and we look forward to checking out more of the locations you have on there. And that being said, there's only one thing left to do. Stay mad. And stay dirty. All right. Check the corner over there. Sorry, everyone. Dave lied. That's two things.